Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Flocktus channel. Ever wondered how the invaluable fuel resources that we rely on is transported across the globe? The transportation of bulk liquid became a reality in the late 19th century, when large petroleum tankers emerged as the most effective means of transporting millions of dollars worth of oil across the vast ocean. Oil tankers are massive maritime vessels designed specifically for the transportation of large quantities of crude oil. There are basically two categories of these giant sea tankers today. The crude tankers move large quantities of unrefined crude from its point of extraction to the refineries. And oil product tankers transport refined oil and its byproducts from refineries to various end users. Personnel responsible for handling payload is highly trained and certified to operate these vessels. Due to their large size and draft, oil tankers are also extremely complex to operate, especially in shallow and congested waters. Therefore, the pilot must have a full understanding and control of the massive vessel, so it can be berthed at the allocated location on the oil terminal. Loading an oil tanker consists primarily of pumping oil into the ship's tanks. The vapors inside the tank must be expelled and depending on the regulations, can be expelled into the atmosphere or discharged back to the pumping station using a vapor recovery line. The biggest of these massive maritime vessels can carry up to 84 million gallons on a single journey. All in all, about 85% of the ship is strictly reserved for oil storage. Only the aft of the ship hosts the bridge, the crew facilities, the engine room and pump room. Despite accounting for only a small portion of the ship, the living quarters of modern oil tankers are quite spacious. Most also feature a large mess hall, which is used for feeding the crew of 20 to 30 sailors. While tanker ships ensure the transportation of oil around the world by sea, specially designed planes, like the KC-135, ensure that fuel gets to the other aircraft equipped for aerial refueling. Trailing hose now. Roger, good to go. 3K to go. Topic. So I got him taking 8.0, he's at 3.0 right now. Also known as the Strato Tanker, this aerial refueling and transport aircraft has been in service since the mid-1950s. It is designed to carry about 28,000 gallons of fuel, with four turbofan engines to ensure it can take off with ease, despite maximum takeoff weights of over 322,000 pounds.
There are two main methods of aerial refueling. There is the probe and the drogue refueling, which involves attaching a probe on the receiver aircraft to an extended flexible fuel hose attached with a drogue from a tanker aircraft. The receiving aircraft pilot carefully maneuvers the aircraft so that the probe from the plane's nose makes contact with the refueling hose. This must be done with calculated accuracy to avoid loose latching and damage to the refueling assembly. The flying boom offers faster fuel transfer. The boom operator navigates a telescoping tube into the receptacle of the aircraft being refueled. Most U.S. Air Force fixed-wing aircraft refuel with the flying boom method. The flying boom refueling method relies very much on the boom operator who performs the task of keeping the telescoping refueling boom in place as the jet pilots maintain their speed and altitude throughout the fuel transfer. All of this is performed at thousands of feet in the air while traveling at high speed. Despite the efficiency in sea and air transportation of the liquid energy, currently, the transportation of oil and gas by tanker truck is sought after in the distribution process worldwide. These specialized semis are designed to carry up to 11,500 gallons of fuel to refilling gas stations across the country. Loading and unloading these trucks is a delicate process, as the possibility of spilling gasoline is a major environmental risk. All operators are always geared with personal protective equipment during this process. In addition to this, most gas stations store their tanks several feet beneath the ground. These tanks are buried at least five feet deep and can only be accessed through mechanized pumping systems. They are also equipped with automatic floater valves to keep vapor from escaping and can stay corrosion free for up to 40 years. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.